Well, hallelujah. It's great to see everybody here. Everybody, fresh faces. Got your coffee breath. <laughs> and we're ready to receive, right? Well, uh, it's my honor to introduce Bob, and, and thank you, Ron. Um, it's such a privilege to, to get together as one body. And, 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 and the, the spirit that's here, the spirit of unity. See, unity is not unity in how we look. It's unity of spirit. It's the unity of spirit. And I feel it. We're family. You know, if we're going to spend eternity together, we might as well get along here. <laughs> I mean, this is the shortest thing you'll ever do. And if you can't get along with people, it's the shortest thing you'll ever do, and you're going to have to get along with them when you're before Jesus. So it's just awesome to be able to be here and to participate in this. I believe God is doing something wonderful. And if you plug in this week, I believe it's going to build. I believe it's going to build. I remember Kenneth Hagin would refuse to take on any uh, speaking assignments unless he was there for three weeks. <laughs> How far we've fallen. <laughs> right? And, 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 but this is a start, and this is a week. Um, it's actually nine, it's ten services in nine days. And I believe as you come and plug in, the glory of the Lord will manifest more and more in here and for you. And there's going to be things that you're going to get free of that you don't even know or understand. You know, the very first session in LTS, I was sitting there and just crying. I, and I told Kim, I'm like, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a crybaby. But uh, I, was, I believe there was some things I was getting free from. And I may not even understand what it is. Those are the things that happen when you get under the anointing. So the anointing's only going to increase. And the anointing, you know, Bob carries that anointing, but it's to rub off of, off of him onto us. And we're going to be set free more and more. Hallelujah. So Bob, come up. Give him heaven. I'm making a t-shirt. I'm going to make a t-shirt like that, and I'm going to wear it. Give him heaven. Oh, it's so good to be with you. Good to be in the house of the Lord together, isn't it? Amen. I don't know about you, but I think my Bible tells me that this is the day the Lord has made. We might as well just be glad in it. Amen. See, I, I, I know my father, he sits in heaven and he laughs. You understand me? And I come to the conclusion of Mary Hart doeth good like a medicine. So uh, our sad days are over. You understand me? Our sad days are over. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. And the kingdom came when you asked the king into your heart because he brought the kingdom with him. And the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, the key is stay in the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost to fill your life more and more every day. See, we understand, and I believe you do. If you don't, you just come see me and I'll help you. <clears throat> we understand that you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It'll equip you to be something that you can't be without Him. And that's a witness. That isn't just a witness to go knock on somebody's door hand them a track and tell them about Jesus. I mean, that's good if that's what God calls you to do. But what I'm saying to you is He fills you with power, deutimus. That's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And what happens to you and me is we become something called a witness, and that witness is to reveal the Christ who lives inside of us. Do you understand me? In other words, I want you to see that Christ in you, church, is the hope of glory. 
and glory, all right, glory manifests in many ways. And the glory of God upon your lives can manifest different. Because why? When God shows up, it's always different. He's not boring. Aren't you glad about that? I don't know about, I don't like, I don't do boring well, all right? But what I'm saying is, it's exciting to serve the Lord. And it's exciting to, to discover the gifts that he's placed in all of you. Can you say amen? See, there's amazing things in each and every one of you as God's children. But what I want you to understand is the only way we're going to discover that is by willingness and obedience to hang out with him more than we ever have before. Because he is progressive. And what he does to you and me is he brings us into a place where we have bypasses. You understand, not heart bypasses. But what I'm saying is we, we bypass who we used to be into that greater witness that he's called us to be. Does that make sense to you? In other words, the Christ in you wants to manifest in the earth today. And right now we live in a nation that needs the manifestations of the goodness of God. Right now we live in a day where we understand that darkness, gross darkness, has crept in upon us. It's all over us, over a nation. But we understand that the light and the glory of God is upon the church of God. It's upon the house of God. And when I refer to that last night, I told you it was, it's not the building. Thank God for this building. I mean, we're, we're not out there in the, in the elements. But you're the church. I said, you're the temple of the living God. He bought you with a price. He bought me with a price. He bought his people with a price. And that's called the price of the blood, of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So he owns your spirit. I said he owns your spirit. You understand me? He has total ownership of your spirit if you're born again. You understand me? You're a triune being. You're a spirit. You have a soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, the, 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 the you I get to know and I get to know you. And we're all different. Aren't you glad about that? Because that's not boring either. Amen? So, but you have an earth suit. Yeah, that's your body, right? One day, if he tarries, we'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But between now and then, we need to occupy, <laughs> all right? And we need to take over and take charge. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning about. I let the Lord give me a, a unique word. Uh, you know, I'm just picking up on things that he showed me in the spirit last night. And I thought, Lord, I, you know, it, it's different when you... I know this is a, I don't know how many of you weren't here last evening, but there were some key things that the Lord spoke that I want to I wanna, I wanna emphasize on. And as we go into that, you shall receive power, Deutimus, after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, to be a witness, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, this is probably the uttermost parts. Can you agree with me? I know where I came from. That's certainly the uttermost parts. If you were to visit there, you'd say, how do people live here? All right? It, it's, it's almost unique, but, you know, God gives us grace for our place. Can you say amen? Aren't you glad for the grace of God? Aren't you glad for his ability when we don't have any? Aren't you glad for his wisdom when you're clueless? Aren't you glad that you could call upon the name of the Lord and he'd rescue you and deliver you and bring you out of darkness into light for such a time as this? Aren't you glad he's a good God and you and I could taste and see that the Lord is good? Aren't you glad that he'll never leave you or forsake you or be with you always even unto the end? Aren't you glad that God's for you and it doesn't matter what's against you? See, I, I can tell in the room right now that some of you are up against some giants. Well, I know a young, young puppy, I think he was just a kid, red-haired, good-looking boy. He knew how to throw a sling, a, 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 they call it a slingshot, all right? He knew how to throw rocks. And uh, he was able to uh, get the lion and the bear, and then he had a challenge. And this big dude, and I think you know the story, his name was Goliath, but we understand that uh, Goliath ticked David off. Do you understand me? Because he was harassing what God loves, and that's his people. And in the harassment, he rose up, and he decided, I don't need Saul's armor, okay? 
I got my own stuff. See, that, that's where the grace of God comes into our life. We have, we have our own stuff. And what I mean by that, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood here. You, you understand me? So what I want you to understand is we, we are in a battle, and it's called with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, and right now they're trying to take over and take charge of our, our country. Boy, it's quiet in this house. See, I'm here to speak truth to you. I trust the Holy Spirit stirs you up because you're the answer to the mess that we're surrounded by. I said you're the answer to the problems that we're facing in our nation as well as the nations of the world. When we look at this, I'm thinking the Christ in you, if, if, if the Holy Spirit raised up Christ from the dead, you don't think that he can't pull you and me out of our messes we get into? Now, I know none of you ever get into messes. All right? I know none of you, know, you don't have those, those situations where, you, where you're like, how in the world I get here? All right? Well, I've had quite a few of them because I've been on the planet a few days. All right? Uh, and in the process of it, I have found the Lord is faithful. I found out that he bypasses my stupidity at times. I found out that he sends a word and heals me and delivers me from my own destruction. See, we could self-destruct, but bless God, we don't need to. Because why? We got a covenant with a God the same way David had a covenant with God, and he took the head off of that giant. See, I believe this week some of you are going to take the heads off some giants. You understand me? See, I, I want you to understand you were meant for war. I know you don't like to talk about war, but I'm telling you, you were meant for war, all right? It might not be a physical war, but I guarantee you there's a spiritual war going on in our nation and probably most likely in every one of our lives. But what I want you to understand, I've read the end of the book and we win. I said we win. Do you understand me? He's already spoiled principalities and powers. He's already made a show of them openly. He's already triumphed over them in it. And he has called you more than a conqueror. And if you weren't here last night, you'll know not exactly what I mean. I, I am getting some smiles here, Pastor. I really am. You understand me? <clears throat> I give a little... A little story of Moran the Conqueror, and that was a champion that he was in the boxing ring, and he has quite a battle, and he takes quite a beating, but he knocks out his opponent, and they lift his hands up, and they put the belt on him, and they come up with the trophy, and they have a, an envelope that has a large check in it, and they hand it to him, and they congratulate him, and then this little 95-pound young wife of his jumps up over the third ring over the rails and jumps into there and takes that envelope away from him see she's more than a conqueror see i want you i want to remind you today that jesus christ has already won the battle do you understand me see i want you to look look through things by faith and faith says Himself took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses, and by his stripes you were healed. Faith says, all my needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. See, faith says that God is for you and not against you. So if, you, if you're tolerating the enemy trying to talk you down, trying to discourage you, you've got to shake it off. And you, I've seen the scripture up here earlier. It's 1 Peter 5, 7. It says that, we can cast all our cares upon him, for he cares for us. Well, I, I want to encourage you this week, if you're planning on coming, I invite every one of you, because why? I'm here to help you. You understand me? I'm in love with the body of Christ. I just can't help myself, all right? And don't tell me you're not perfect, all right? Because I'm going to look at you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Because that makes you and me perfect, all right? So, you know, we don't need to judge each other. Aren't you glad about that? All right, because if God's for us, and it don't matter what's against us, we ought to be for each other. Amen? See, that, that's part of the prophetic movement that God wants to do in the earth today. It's called edification, exhortation, and comfort. And I've come to the conclusion that every one of us need a, a continual dose of it. Amen? See, God has medicine for us to build us up, not discourage us. See, God has some things for us. It's the engrafted Word of God which will save our souls. He wants our soul, which is your mind, and that's where most of us get in problems, 
is we get some stinking thinking going on and we discourage ourselves or we let the enemy discourage us. And we just swallow it. And next thing you know, we walk around defeated. I want you to know you're not defeated. I want you to know you are more than conquerors. I want you to know that Jesus Christ has already spoiled the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places. He has already made a show of them openly. He has already triumphed over what the devil has tried to do. But we got to join him in the victory. Don't focus on, on, on the problem. Focus on the answer, and his name is Jesus Christ. In other words, our eyes need to be on the master in this day and this hour. We need to be full of the Holy Ghost and full of the Word of God in this day and this hour. Because why? God wants to raise you up to be the reflection of the image of Jesus Christ in the earth. Our earth needs a manifestation of the goodness of God coming through the heart of the life of the believer. Amen? So I want to encourage every one of you to understand you got the power. If, you have re if you've received Jesus Christ, and the next, the next thing is get yourself filled with the Holy Ghost and then stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Because, see, in, in the book of Ephesians says to be being filled with the Spirit. And when you are, you've got a song in your heart. No matter the music's playing or not, you've got a song in your heart. Can you say Amen. People think you're goofy because you'll start talking to yourself, all right? Well, I'm serving one who talked to trees. How about you? You understand me? There's some things that need talked to in your life, okay? There's probably a few things in your life that might need cursed from the roots of it and to command it to die in Jesus' name and get out of your way. You understand me? See, that's what the master did. He said, have faith in God. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And he says, Therefore, what things soever you desire, and that's what we're going to hit on this week, is desire. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to bring the true God-given desires that he placed in your heart to, to a manifested <coughs> way. Now, let me use that word to manifest its way in your life so that the distractions, the struggles, the things that have tried to consume you and knock you down and pull you down, the weight, the care, the sin, whatever it might be, understand those things need to be destroyed so that you can put your focus on victory by looking at Jesus Christ, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. See, what he started in us as the church we're coming towards the end. And that's not to scare you. What I'm saying is we are still a last day's church. You understand me? So in other words, we have a great responsibility to before him to accomplish that what he has called us and anointed us for. You have been anointed, my brother and sister. And it's not a feeling. <laughs> you understand me? It's the facts. And if any of your name is Jack, it's the facts, Jack. All right? So what I'm trying to tell you is it's the facts that God has anointed you and he has highly favored you and all spiritual blessings belong to you in heavenly places. But the only way we're going to get them on us is to hang out in heavenly places. And how you do that is in fellowship, in harmony, in union with him. See, it's all about your personal relationship with him that counts. I know that's basic Christianity, but I've come to the conclusion that a lot of people fill up their lives with a lot of stuff and they forget about their first love. It's time the body of Christ comes back to their first love. Because why? Without that, you and I can't do much. And right now, we are not going to bring any change to anything without him. The cool thing is, is we are not without him. The neat thing is, is he is with us and he is in us and he wants to work through us. And I believe some of you are going to understand that there's a mighty force to be reckoned with by the spirit of God that's inside of you when you accomplish that, what he has called you, because your footsteps are ordered by the Lord. Do you understand me? He orders the steps of a good man. And right now your goodness is based on him because you're in Christ. All right. It's not that we're good. It's that he's good. And then when I asked him in, he took over, and he took charge, and he eliminated Bob. My problem is Bob tries to rise up every now and then. I know you don't have that problem, all right? Now, you, you could ask my wife that if she was here. Well, thank God she's not, all right? I, I, uh, I'm going to try to teach a little bit here, if I can, this morning. And uh, are you Okay. 
I know I'm different. Uh, I didn't make me. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. We've been we've been fashioned. I'm gonna go through some things the Lord showed me, especially for the fellowship here, Pastor, but as well as for all of us. It's for the body of Christ. I trust that this will encourage each and every one of you. That's my heart's desire to see you encouraged, to see you build up, to see you get angry like David did at what was going on, and you say, you know what, I, I, I will not let him destroy what he wants to destroy and to rise up and take the head of that giant off because there's some giants in the land, but we're well able. You understand me? We're well able to take back what the devil has stolen. Could you say amen to that? So I, 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 I want you to, I want to trust that you'll be encouraged by this in this new season. And I believe we've entered into a new season in the body of Christ. And we've entered into it, into America especially. And I know it goes for probably every nation on the, on the planet. So as we look at that, I don't know about you, the older I've gotten, sometimes it's difficult to go through the doorway and change. <laughs> but change is a, a, a seeker-friendly word that John the Baptist would say, Repent! You, you, are you with me? Does that make it clear to you? All right. And there is a process, if we want to see true revival and the true manifestations of the power of God in our nation once again, and want to see us raised up, full of the glory of God and accomplishing the will of God in our individual lives as well as our corporate life as a church. And we've got to understand there's some things we've got to change. And it comes through repentance. It comes through the eyes of our understanding being enlightened so that I see what is the darkness that is trying to destroy my life, trying to discourage me, trying to pull me down, trying to trip me up, and try, trying to deceive me and lie to me. Because see, there's a lying spirit that's been loosed over the United States of America. And you don't think it cause, doesn't try to creep into the church? That's why Jesus said you got to know the truth because it's the truth that's going to make you free. And God wants you free to be able to follow him and to serve him and to do the will of God. You know it's important that you and I do the will of God in this day and this hour? You know it's not a, it's not a good suggestion what I'm telling you today, I want you to understand, every one of you have divine purpose. You under, God needs all hands on deck. If, can I use that terminology to you? In other words, he needs us all full-heartedly engaged in what he needs to get done in this hour of time. What I've seen when I was praying this morning especially there's a strength in this house, and I'm not saying it isn't in CWI, I believe it is too, but there's a strength in this house, Pastor Ron, that in this fellowship, what I've seen, I've seen a house of prayer. And Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And in the process of that, I, I, I thought there's many of you that understand the true value of intercessory prayer for our nation. Many of you here, I believe this morning. The freedoms we must stand for in this season by driving back the enemy of the church and taking back what has been stolen from us. Mr. Webster, in 1828, the word intercessor means a mediator, one who interposes between parties at variance with a view to reconcile them, one who pleads in behalf of another. Is there any intercessors in here? Is there any men and women of God that don't know that they've been called to stand in the gap, to make up the hedge, and to protect the anointing in the house of God, to stand on this wall and protect what God cherishes, and that's his church? See, I believe there is. But I want you to understand we're all called to it. Do you hear me? See, some of us haven't stepped into that place through that doorway yet and had the lights come on and say, you know what? There's a high calling on my life. And that call is to him. Because when I get to him, then I can go for him. You see, one of the problems 
in many churches, probably not here, many people want to go for him. How do I know such information? Because I've been there. You understand me? In other words, the zeal of God consumed me and I ended up in places because I got the word of the Lord before I hung out with him long enough to get the ways that he wanted to carry it out. You hear me? See, I, I, I'm here to help you. you. You understand me? I'm not here to take anything from you. I'm here to help you because why? God wants you lit on fire. He wants you so full of the Holy Ghost and so consumed with the presence of God that people, when they come in contact with you, devils have to leave. You understand me? Uh, atmospheres have to change. Miracles will manifest. Why? Because you're a man and woman of God with an anointing of God that will break yokes and remove burdens and set captives free. See, I want to encourage each and every one of you, you were born for such a time as this. You're not too late, you're not too early, and I don't give a rip how old you are or how young you are. I want you to know God can use every one of us. I come to Jesus through a five-year-old that told me, Daddy, you're going to go to hell. That started the process. And then my, I believe she was up in her 70s, and she called my house, and she says, you tell, don't you call me Bobby here. She called me Bobby, all right? She was my aunt. Her name was Frida. She was a candy maker and a chef, and just an amazing woman, and she wore this bright red ruby lipstick. And she loved to plant one right on my cheek. I mean, she just planted, and I couldn't get it off. I don't know what that stuff had in it back then. We're talking years ago. But she would put one there, and I had to wear that thing and try to, I didn't want to go to my friend's house because I was embarrassed, all right? But she loved me. Well, she called my house when I, before I was saved, and she told my wife, you tell Bobby when he gets home that Jesus is coming up, and he needs to get ready. I think within that week, she passed, and she went home to be with the Lord. See, to her, he came back. But that was the way I started into this kingdom I call the kingdom of God. That was before I knew anything about salvation. See, I was a heathen. I know none of you. You're all perfect. But I needed to be saved, all right? There was an urgent request for me to be saved, all right? So in coming into the kingdom, I come to the conclusion that he is coming back. And what I'm saying by that, we're in this season where things prophetically are coming, so much has already come to pass. We're closer than any generation has ever been. So God has grace for this generation to stick you in your place so that you can run your race and hit the mark of the call that's upon your life. Every one of us. But how are we going to do that? We've got to understand it depends on my intimacy with the Master. I need to hear the voice of God in this day and this hour. I need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I need to shake myself loose of the things that distract me and hold me back. And in process of doing that, then I can focus on him. I can hear the orders. I can get the assignments. And I can walk worthy of the Lord and accomplish that, what he has called me to do. And the cool thing is, we're all in this together. And you're just as vitally important as every one of us here. I said every one of us are vitally important to do our job in this body. Because we're the body of Christ. Now, I need both of my arms. I need both of my legs. I, I need my ears. Do you understand me? I need my eyeballs. I, I, I need my organs. I need my guts. I mean, there's some guts in this house. You understand me? What I'm I want you to understand that you're the body of Christ and your you're, you're parts or your members and we're not all the same. And that's how come it's so cool because you don't get bored with each other because you challenge each other. Can you say amen? Yeah, let me go on. I want you to go to James chapter 5, if you would, please. You okay? How, how long do I have, Pastor? I don't want to take advantage of that. What time do you... Oh, okay, all right. I love you, brother. <laughs> James 5, I know you're familiar with this passage of Scripture, but... It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. 
And the statement I want you to get a hold of is the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you're born again, you're righteous right now because of what he's done. Not because what you've done, what you needed to do was receive him. Well, he, he made you and me righteous before God the Father. So we have right standing. I believe you all know this. We have right standing with God the Father. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. We can obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. And right now, we need to, as the body of Christ, to go in boldly into the throne room of God to obtain the mercy that is needed for a nation so that we can tap into the grace that we need to run our race and take back what the devil's trying to steal. How many of you like freedom? Do you know there's a plan to take it away from you? You know, I'm here to wake you up if you're not. You understand me? And it's not that I don't love you. It's that, you know what? I love freedom, and I don't want my grandbabies or my... I got great-grandchildren. I thought I was a great granddad before I had him, but now I know I am, all right? So anyhow, so, some of you will get that. But what I, you understand, I, we, you know, especially of those of us in here that have been seasoned, I guess that's the word we used yesterday, uh, we've been seasoned, we've gone through a few days, <laughs> a few weeks, uh, uh, a few months, and maybe a few years, and things have changed. You, you understand me? Things that I used to take for granted, I see the enemy trying to sneak in and take away from us. And I don't want my kids to go through that. I don't want my grandbabies to go through that. Because the problem has been the church somewhere in the process of time went to sleep on us. I said the church, I'm not talking, that's not to be condemning. But what I am telling you, my friend, is we got to stir ourselves up and shake it off. Because you carry the answer for the situations we're dealing with. And he's called to Christ, the Son of the living God. It's the anointing that you carry. It's the same spirit that raised him up from the dead that you're fi filled with. So when you're filled, you stay being filled. And don't lose your song. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elias is a man subject like, the, uh, like, to, like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly, say prayed earnestly, that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. Say, prayed again. And the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. The Amplified Bible says in verse 16 on the latter part of its part B, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man, I'm speaking to you, of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. And I want you to understand, every one of us have the ability to tap in to that power. Every one of us, no exceptions. What I seen last night is I seen that there was people in this house in the evening service last evening that were pregnant with burdens that God stuck on them. <laughs> with purposes, with desires, the things that need to be birthed out. And the scripture I want to read to you, and some of you understand it, I know some of you have already probably gone through it, was the Apostle Paul in Galatians 4.19. I'll read it to you out of the Amplified Bible if that's okay. My little children, of whom I travail, or whom I again suffer birth pain, King James says travail. Here it says, I again suffer birth pains until Christ is completely and permanently formed, molded within you. Those of you that carry some season, like I do, have a purpose of birthing a generation into the fullness of God. Part of it is discipleship. 
Part of it is impartation. Part of it is being an example, a living example of who Christ is to them. Part of it is encouraging them. Another part is praying for them so that they will rise up and be a generation because I believe the generation is on the earth today that's going to usher in the presence of Jesus Christ. My little children, of whom I again suffer birth pains until Christ is completely and permanently formed or molded within you. Go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. I know this is probably quite familiar with all of you. Sometimes it's the familiar scriptures that we take for granted. When you look at the Word this week, I'm going to ask you to look at it with fresh eyes. Thank God there's something I'm missing here. I want it all. Open the eyes of my understanding. Enlighten me. Let the entrance of your word bring light and illumination to my life once again. In Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not how we should pray as we ought to, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I'm talking about the deep groanings in the spirit in the middle of intercession. I'm talking about the stirrings of the Lord when he wakes you up in the middle of the night and you know that God is got to tapping you on the shoulder. I'm talking about those times you're driving down the highway and all of a sudden you know that somebody is headed for trouble and you're not quite certain what to do about it. I'm talking about when you get disturbed and you don't have no reason to be disturbed and all of a sudden God wants to take you into a place of intimacy with him so that you could burst some things out, so that you could, you could make certain that that tragedy that the enemy was trying to take somebody out doesn't happen. So in other words, you as a man and woman of God have the ability to go into the realm of the Spirit and cause things to shift and cause things to change and cause things to be rearranged in the lives of people. Can you say amen? See, I absolutely believe the prayer house is the generator of what needs to be done in the body of Christ. See, if we want a weak church, then we're going to have weak prayer. We don't need weak prayer right now, and we don't need weak Christians right now. We need men and women just like you that will rise up, shake yourself off, and be strong in the Lord once again, and in the power of His might, and understand that you got weapons, but you also got some armor, and you fully equipped in the whole armor of God, that your loins are girt about with truth, you have on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and you take the helmet of the salvation, you put it on, you don't take it off, and you take that sword sword of the spirit and you start you start understand that sword comes out your mouth and you got that shield that you can quench every fiery dart of the wicked one every fiery dart of the wicked one because they're coming at us my brother and sister every fiery dart of the wicked one we have that we know that I know you do but are we using it see James says if we just be hearers and not doers we're just self-deceived. And when you're self-deceived, you end up going to sleep when it's time to go to battle. My brother and sister, I'm calling you to war. I'm calling you to war for your families, for your friends, for your marriages, for your nation, for your freedom, for your liberty, and for justice and righteousness to rule and reign. Because the hand of the Lord has not been removed from the United States of America. I said it's not been removed. We still have a commission and an assignment to fulfill, and that's to take this gospel into all the nations. Who's going to do that? The church is. Men and women just like you. I believe there's missionaries right here, even this morning. I believe there's some young men and young women that God's going to raise up, put a call of God into nations and into certain places on the planet, and he's going to send them out. And they might not be old enough to leave the house, but God's going to raise them up, and it's going to look strange. Saying, you know what? How can a how can a 15-year-old do that? Go and talk to David and ask him how he did it. You understand me? So don't put limitations on age. In other words, there might be a 95 year old grandma in here all of a sudden God says you know what you need to go to C Quebec you know, in other words Canada needs the anointing of God because they've, they've been swallowed up and they've lost their freedom well somebody's got to go up there and pray and watch the glory of God come back down on the church and stir them up so understand it's not a mount of age it's willingness and obedience 
to do the supernatural things that he's calling every one of us to do. And that comes through willingness and obedience to listen to him and obey him and to walk in the footsteps that he's ordered us. Can you shout amen in that? Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. We know not how we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because, and here's the key, He makes intercession for the saints. I'll talk about the church. I'll talk about you and me, the body of Christ. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, the will of God is that you're whole, you're well, that you prosper, you walk in health, your souls prosper. The will of God is that you're the head, not the tail. But right now, the devil's trying to make us the tail, wag us around, and control us and manipulate us and steal our freedom. And if we don't wake up, we'll, we'll wake up and we'll think, you know what? We've been taken over. And I don't want taken over. I don't know about you. It's quiet in this house. For we know that all things, say all things, work together for good to them that what? Love God. I want to ask you this week to allow the Holy Spirit to bring you back into that place of love and total commitment wholeheartedly in your relationship with Him. Because we get, as human beings, we have the ability to get distracted. We have the ability to get so busy that we put the priorities that He's priority. Seek ye third. It didn't say that, did it? It said first. And see, I, I know you're no different than I am. We get caught up in life. We get preoccupied. And we put what's important on the shelf and we waste our time on things that really are not as important as serving God and doing the will of God in our life. So I'm going to ask you as a favor, as my brother and sister, where's your love life? And I'm talking about your love with Him. Your love to, for His people. Your love to do what He's called you to do. Your love to be a blessing to mankind. Your love to love what He loves and to hate what He hates. Because there's some things the Lord hates. What I got, Jay and Ron, I, I, I do not know how this is going to work. I really don't. And it's not my business. But there is a place in prayer that God's calling this group of people in this house and in CWI. Things in the spirit of intercession and to help people that don't know how to intercede. To help them and teach them so that God can raise up men and women. It'll be men and women of prayer and come into what I believe, I, I absolutely believe as a, as, a, as a pastor, as a minister, or whatever I am anymore, as a disciple, the highest call is to Him. And the last time I knew when I'm to Him, I'm fellowshipping with Him, I'm hanging out with Him, and I end up interceding for Him and for what He loves. See, I believe that every one of us can come into that place of intercession in this season of life to some degree. Some of you can do much of it. I know you can. Some of us aren't as busy as maybe we used to be. You know, it's one thing when you're raising a family, but it's a whole other thing when the family's gone and you got empty nest and all of a sudden you got time. What are you going to do with it? Well, just enter in to that closet. Enter into that secret place. Enter in and understand you are called to war. 
And you're a mighty warrior in the kingdom of God. And you're not fighting against people. You're not fighting against flesh and blood. But you're going in there. And as you're praying, you're coming boldly into the throne of grace. You're coming to obtain mercy, to find grace to help in a desperate time of need for a nation, for a generation, for the body of Christ, and for the nations of this world. And as you do that, my brother and sister, I want you to know God is going to show himself strong on your behalf. You're going to come and you're going to understand that the anointing of God and the presence of God and the glory of God and the word of the Lord is going to become so rich and tangible to your life. All of a sudden, you're not going to act like you used to. All of a sudden, the things that used to distract you won't distract you anymore. All of, all of a sudden, you'll come and you'll walk through a threshold and the things that matter don't matter anymore. And there's one urgency that's come upon you and that's the urgency to pray and to see the glory of God manifest in the earth today and to see the harvest come in out of darkness into light and to see men and women rise up and take their place of grace and see this, this gospel go to all the nations because I heard a word this morning, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, neither of the name, understanding he, he, he has not a given you a spirit of fear church, you got power, you got I mean, you're full of the love of God I can, I can touch it it's tangible in this house. Hallelujah. Don't lose that. But you are not confused either. I said you're not confused. That's a lion spirit that tries to put you into confusion. And you need to stand in your authority and take power in the name of Jesus. And take that thing and get it out of your life because it's not from God. Because why? That comes from the enemy himself. And that's a way that he tries to destroy good people. There's a dimension of faith. And when I talk about faith, I'm talking about our faith in Him and what He said. Our faith to carry out His orders and to do what He told us to do. Our faith to trust Him when it don't make sense. I know you guys, I don't need to teach you faith here. I know you all know that. But what I, I want you to see is there's a dimension. The Lord told me, He says, the dimension of faith that I'm calling this house to, these people to here. And it's stronger and greater than what they've walked in the ever before. Stronger and greater faith than we've ever walked in before. See, now that I've been here for two days, I'm part of your family, whether you like me or not. I know some of you kids don't like all your siblings. You love them, but you don't like them all the time, all right? So if you don't like me, I'm okay with that, but you got to love me, all right? What I am trying to tell you is there's greater faith for all of us to tap into and to walk before him. That is what I believe he's calling all of us to in this new season. I like what Brother Shambaugh used to say, all you need is faith in God. And that's all we need. But it comes right down to it. I need faith in what he said. To stand in his, his word and not budge by what I see, what I feel, what people say, what the popular opinions are. Because why? God is greater inside of you than that devil that's in the world. Understand, this is still the victory that overcomes the world. It's called your faith. You have faith in God, but God wants to bring an increase, and faith always comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And when we teach and when we preach, we expect faith to grow and develop inside of you. But I want you to know there's faith that comes when your head is on the heart of the Lord, and He speaks to you, and all of a sudden you know the desires that He placed in your heart. You know the assignments that He's given to you. You know the grace that He's deposited upon you. You know the call upon your life. It's not a, it's not a matter of confusion. You know who you are in Christ. Christ and you know who Christ is in you. And understand, when you come to that place, no devil in hell can take you out. No devil in hell can stop what God has for you to do. Because why? You've come into a place of covenant with him and you're covered by the blood of Jesus. He's got angelic host over you. He'll protect you and keep you in all your ways. No weapon formed against you can prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is a heritage of the servants of the Lord and that belongs to him and that belongs to you because why? You're his his people, you're his church. And he said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. And if we let it, it's our fault. 
Hallelujah. The call of this hour, and I'll be short and sweet because I want to see you tonight. I'm short anyhow. All right? That's not a problem. Sweet, not all the time. All right? I'm working on that. It's, I'm developing in the fruits. All right? I hope you are too. Romans 1.17. And I'm going to ask you pastors, you leaders are in this house, I'm going to ask you to take these scriptures and take them apart because God wants to develop stronger faith inside of you and inside of the body and the flocks in which you carry. Do you, do you understand me? You're going to say, I know that. I've read all the books, listened to all the tapes. No, God wants to bring you into experiences that you haven't heard about yet. Romans 1.17, for therein is the righteousness of God, God revealed from faith to faith. Say faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by what? Faith. Okay, Galatians 3.11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Say that with me. The just, that's who I am. I'm justified through Christ, you as well. Understand, the just shall live by faith. Say that. The just, that's who I am. I shall live by faith. And then in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Now, say now. When is now? Now, okay, that's pretty, wow. You all get an A-plus today, amen? Now the just shall live by faith. When? Now. When is now? Now. When, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to live by faith. It says, but if any man draw back. See, there's been churches that have drawn back through this last season. They shut their doors. They let the spirit of fear take them, and control them, manipulate them, and take them out. But there's a remnant in the earth. And I believe you're part of that remnant. That God's raising up. I said He's raising up. He's raising it up for this day and this hour. And He's going to pour out His spirit greater upon your life. And you're going to come to a place where you don't even know who you are anymore in yourself. Because you're not yourself. You are living and moving and being in Christ. And the Christ inside of you has become, has become everything to you that matters in life. And that's where he's bringing his body. Every one of us. It says, now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. How many of y'all want to please the Lord? I'm going to read this in the text that it's setting in just to help you. Hebrews 10.35 Cast not away therefore your confidence without a great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. How many want to receive the promise that He's promised you? Well, we need to do the will of God. For yet a little while, and He that shall come will come. What's that say? He that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Verse 39. I want you to focus on that because I don't want you leaving here negative. But we are not of them that draw back. I said, we are not of them that draw back. The New Living Translation says, but we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We're not like them. None of us here in the name of Jesus. Can you shout amen? It says, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now, your soul 
get saved by the engrafted Word of God. Our nation, the soul of America, is trying to be ripped away from us. You hear what I'm saying? I want you to look at this in a bigger picture than just you. You are important. And I want your soul whole. If you've been shipwrecked in your soul, He wants to restore your soul. He don't want you in, in, in an emotional crisis the rest of your life. He don't want you shipwrecked or heart, heart sick. That's not the will of God in your life. He wants you whole and well and strong and fit and be able to run the race that He's called you to, every one of us. But I want you to see the soul of America and the purpose of the United States of America is at stake right now. And if we don't understand history, we're missing something. And I believe most of you do. I believe for the saving of the soul of the United States of America. I haven't lost hope for our nation. I know there's some preachers that have. I'm not one of them. But I do believe it's up to the church. You, know, you pray for your government. You pray for your leaders. You, you do the Bible. But if we don't do our part, what they do has no, no bearings. It'll just fall apart. Because the prayer house, the church of Jesus Christ, is the generator of power that runs a nation. And it takes all of us on deck, fully engaged, doing our part, working together with the Lord and accomplishing the task that He sent us to. That's how vital this is at this day and this hour. The way we translation says, but we are not people who shrink back and perish, but are among those who believe and gain possession of their souls. Now, I, this word here, I will stop there. I want you to go to Psalm 92. Psalm 92, especially well, all of you, please. But God wants to address some seasoned people in this house today. If, if nobody else, I'm taking it. All right? Now, I want to encourage you to take it. I believe this, this is speaking about our, our nation, it's speaking about the church, and it's speaking about what God wants to do with us in this day and this hour. I believe the Lord said, I'm going to stretch you beyond comfort into the place in which I'm calling you to in this day and this hour. He gave me Ephesians 3, verse 20, for you. But now unto him is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works into us. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout ages and world without end. I like the Amplified. It says here, he says, now to him who by in consequence of the actions of his power which is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do supernaturally far over and above all that we dare ask, think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams, to him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. See, that's a man and woman that know how to pray. Know how to go into the presence of God and get things done in the supernatural realm of the Spirit. And I believe there's many of them in this house right now. Psalm 92. I'll read it in its fullness. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the palstry, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are, are, the, are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. The senseless man knoweth not, neither doeth a fool understand this. When the wicked, now here's where I want you to see. When the wicked spring is the grass... And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, are most high forever. 
For though thy enemies, O Lord, for though thy enemies shall perish, all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall be shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. And in this statement, I want you to quote this statement with me. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Say that with me. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The churches that are represented here today shall be anointed with fresh oil. Corporately. And then you individually. Say that again with me. It sounded so good. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Now say, we shall be anointed with fresh oil. And what that's for is for this day, this season, this hour in which we are in. Because you were called for such a time as this. And it's the anointing you carry that's going to make the difference in your life and in the lives of those that your life touches in the assignments that you're called to do. And as you carry them through, through willingness and faithfulness, being faithful in a little, God's going to give you more and more and more. Because I see increase in this place. I see increase that's going to overwhelm some of you. And you're going to shake your heads. I don't know how we did it, but glory to God. Hallelujah. My eyes, verse 11, also shall see my desire on my enemies. Well, that gives me hope. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous, that's you, shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like cedars in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Are you planted in the local body? Are you planted in Christ in what He loves? And He is in love with His church. They shall bring forth fruit. I told you I'm taking this, all right? in old age. I'm not old yet, but I'm older than I used to be. For those of you that were questioning. Alright? They shall bring forth fruit in old age. Now that ought to speak to some of you folks in this house today. They shall be fat. Say be fat. Now, I'm not talking about your weight. Alright? We're not going there. They shall be flat, fat, and flourishing. That word fat, I want you to get the meaning of it in the Hebrew. It means rich, fertile. I, I like what the straw or the amplified says. They shall be full of sap. Oh, you're sappy. Hallelujah. Or spiritual vitality. Say spiritual vitality vitality. Why? Because there's a race that needs run, and there's a, a bullseye that needs hit. And there's a call upon your life, and it needs to be fulfilled, and you need to hit the mark of the call, the high calling of God that is upon your life, each and every one of you in this house, and understand this is your day and your hour. This is a day of the church to rise and shine like a noonday sun. This is a day for you and I to shake ourselves loose of everything that's held us back, and to say, God, at your, at your word, I will obey you and I will carry you through because you give me grace and you anoint me with fresh oil so that I can accomplish the assignment and the call and the purposes upon my life in this hour. Hallelujah. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat. Mr. Webster in 1828, when I looked that up, I thought, you know, he'll, he'll know what's going on because he still used a word in his dictionary. Abounding in spiritual grace. All oh, His grace is sufficient for all of us to run our race. I said it's sufficient. Abounding in spiritual grace. To show that the Lord is upright, He is a rock, and there is no unrighteousness in Him. The Amplified says in 12, it says, The uncompromising righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, be long-lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic, stable, durable, and incorruptible. 
planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of God. Growing in grace, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap, of spiritual vitality, and rich in all the, in, in the, in the freshness of trust, of love, and of commitment. I want to pray for you. I trust the entrance of his word today has brought you light. I know the Holy Spirit has spoken to hearts directly here individually, as well as bodies corporately. I know that God is doing a stirring in every one of our lives in this day and this hour, bringing us into accountability and responsibility so that we can walk in the authority that's been given to us as believers. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters here. I thank you they have ears to hear and they have heard. That they have hearts to perceive and they have perceived. I thank you, Father, that your word has gone forth the way you showed me. And the entrance of it has brought light and illumination to these that are so precious to you. I thank you for the opportunity to sow your word into these great churches, into these wonderful pastors and leaders, and into your flock, the great church that you said you'd build and the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against it. Father, I honor you, and I glorify you, and I thank you for each one in this house. I thank you for that fresh anointing upon their lives in this day and this hour. I thank you that confusion, anxiety, distress, and pressure of life has been broken by the name of Jesus Christ over their minds and over their hearts today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless you. We bless you. We do. We bless you. Lord. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Don't get nervous in His presence, church. Just, just pray in the Spirit a bit. Pray in the Spirit. Don't mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'll say this and we'll pick up tonight. I, I see many here been bystanders because of caution, because of maybe hurts, pain, injection issues, whatever it might be. But you've kind of sit back and you have observed what's going on in the body of Christ, in the church as you know it. And you've come in at times and you didn't feel comfortable like you used to. Huh. I'm going to pray for you. You're vital to the body of Christ. Whoever it is I'm speaking to, and it might be numerous people here, God needs you to connect your heart fully engaged with what he's doing in the local church. He needs your gifting because that's why he give it to you. He needs your anointing. That's why he put it on you. He needs the wisdom that you carry, the grace that you have, but he needs your willingness and obedience because he can't work with you if you're not willing and you're not obedient. 
He wants you to become pliable again to Him. He will heal the innermost parts of your being by that step of faith when you say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will not allow fear, hurt, pain, rejection, differences, and disagreements to keep me back from being a part of the great body of Christ with a fully engaged heart. If that's you, you know exactly who I'm talking to. I'm not pointing fingers. There's no condemnation here. But there is a call upon your life. And that call is for this day and this hour. And it will never be fulfilled unless you put your whole heart back in to submission, to the leadership, and the lordship of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for those individuals that you're speaking to right now. I thank you for depositing grace upon them. I thank you, Father, for healing the innermost parts of their being. Lord, I release my faith on their behalf in the name of Jesus and the corporate faith that's in this house. That your healing virtue would go and heal the innermost parts of their being. Heal the brokenness that's within them, the the heart issues, the soulish things that they've gone through, the the tragedy, and even, God, I I sense that there's been a ripping or a, a tearing apart of of relationships that were meant to be together, that were meant to be in covenant together. Lord, I'm asking you, by the power of your Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, on behalf of each one, that that call is to. Lord, that you'll go deep inside of them, even this morning. Holy Spirit, quicken, cause wholeness to be manifested. We release that word, and Father, we thank you. You sent your word, and you healed them. And you delivered them from that destructive force of the enemy. So, Father, I claim their healing on their behalf. I call them, in the name of Jesus Christ, out of the deception, out of the hurt, out of the pain, out of the rejection, into that place of life, and life more abundantly, into that, into that, into that heart that is fully engaged to do the will of God in their life. That depressive spirit that has attacked you, I take authority over that now in the name of Jesus. It has no right, it has no place in your life. Lord, I release the joy of the Lord to manifest in their heart, even even this week, that they'll just find themselves chuckling and laughing at things that they didn't even think were funny anymore. Lord God, let them bring them back into a place of, of that exceeding joy. Lord God, joy to just be in your presence, joy to fellowship with you, joy to be back with other people in in the body of Christ, joy to open up your word, joy to hear from heaven once again, joy to worship. Lord God, let that joy be manifested in their life. Bring them into that place, Lord God, of delight in your presence once again. I call them out of that dark situation, out of that deception, out of those lies. I call them into the spirit of truth and the manifestations of the spirit of truth so that they're set free tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I release that in the atmosphere of this house of anyone that even comes in and out of this house. Lord God, let the anointing of God from this day forward cause a breaking of the chains of the enemy of the deceptions of the enemy cause them even as they come into the doorways into the thresh room into in through father into the sanctuary lord god that your anointing would come upon them and break the yoke remove the burden and set them free in this day and hour in the name of jesus lord we release that and we thank you sir We honor you, Jesus' name.